recipe, check. Whisk, check. Measuring spoon, check. Saucepan, check. Uh, hopefully we don't mess this up. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the 2024 Baking Challenge. I'm your host, Katie, and I'm gonna try really hard not to mess this up. <laughs> If I do, that's okay because mistakes can be tasty and that's how we learn. Today, it is week number 20. Woohoo, I'm really excited about that. And we are baking Japanese milk bread rolls. So grab your ingredients and let's bake. Hello and welcome. If you're new here, let me give you a quick rundown of the basics. I created the 2024 baking challenge while I was laid up recovering from surgery and watching baking shows. I love to bake and realized that I really hadn't done enough of it, so I challenged myself to do one brand new to me recipe every single week this year. Now being the obsessive fangirl that I am, I picked every single recipe from King Arthur Baking Company. A little pretentious, but that's okay. They've got some good stuff. So I can promise you four things. The first one is that we are baking on a budget. Um, my grocery store in my small rural town is Walmart. That's what I get. If I can avoid having to order some kind of expensive ingredient that I'm only gonna use one time, then I'm gonna do it. The second thing I can promise you is that I'm gonna cut corners. Um, so if I find a technique or a machine in my household that's going to do some of the work for me and cut my energy, I'm going to do that also. The third thing I can promise you is that some of these recipes, I'm going to alter the ingredients. That doesn't mean that you have to. I am baking with uh, severe food allergies and a small picky eater in the house. So I have to kind of accommodate that. And the fourth thing that I can 100% promise you is that I'm gonna make mistakes. I am not a professional baker, it's just something I love to do, and you don't have to be perfect at something to continue doing it. So those are the four things, and let's get started. So Japanese milk bread, as I learned from the internet, thank you, Teacher Google, um, seems to be kind of like a staple recipe, which I love. Um, and on the surface, the recipe kind of looks a little difficult, but once you dig into it, it's really not. It is time consuming. We are gonna have some uh, two different rest times for our dough, and then the rolls are gonna cook for like a half hour. So it's like a three and a half, four hour long recipe, but a lot of that is sitting around and waiting, which I know I don't like to do, but that's what you gotta do. Okay, let me pull up the recipe here. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm nervous, okay? My history with making rolls, not a good one. I tried to make some super easy dinner roll recipe for Thanksgiving one year and they were like hockey pucks. I followed the recipe to the letter and I still messed it up. That's okay. We're gonna do the scary things, that's fine. I'll hold your hand, you hold my hand, we'll get through this. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna make the starter. And I wrote this down. Uh, it has a very specific name, and I was very unsure about how to pronounce it. Once again, Google stepped in, and hopefully Google didn't steer me wrong on this, but I believe it is pronounced Tanz Tanzong. Um, hopefully I didn't mess that up. I, I probably did, and I'm so, so sorry. Uh, but anyway, the starter is going to be three tablespoons of bread flour. Now I'm not working with bread flour here. I did not have any in the pantry. I'm using all purpose. You're gonna make sure that you are leveling it off. So that's one. I'm gonna to have to refill my canister after this. Um, two, I love these spoons because they did come with a little leveler, which is incredibly convenient. Um, because this is a roll recipe and because I have never successfully made rolls from scratch, I am being very careful in how I measure. So, sorry. Um, three tablespoons of, oh, that was only supposed to be two tablespoons of bread flour. See, 
This is where my dyslexia kicks in. We're just going to put all that back in. Chaos baking. <laughs> it's, it's what we do here accidentally every time. It's like when I accidentally threw raisins all over my floor. Okay, two tablespoons of flour. Woo, I'm glad I caught that. All right, two tablespoons of flour, three tablespoons of water, and three tablespoons of milk. Now they want the milk to be whole milk. I'm using 2% because that's what we drink in this house. I also forgot to get it out. So hang on a minute while I gather those ingredients. Okay, I want you to look at this up close. So hopefully I don't mess this up too much. All right, we are adding our three tablespoons of milk. Carefully. One. Two, I say careful and then I splash it everywhere. Three, and three tablespoons of water. One, two, three. Honestly, if I had thought about it, I would have checked the website to see if they had weighed those ingredients because that would have been so much easier. This is where the little whisking comes in at. All right. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's not lumpy. So think of this as a gravy start. And if you don't know how to make gravy from scratch, you are absolutely missing out and I'm happy to teach you um, because gravy is amazing. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite things. And it's super easy to make once you just know how to do it. So um, I guess they also call it a roux in fancy kitchens and with people that actually know what they're doing, but that's not me. So anyway, we're going to turn this on a low heat, uh, continue to make sure that you're whisking it three to five minutes until it's thick. So what you're gonna see when you mix it, when you know it's ready, is that you're gonna have lines, okay? It's gonna kind of look like um, if you've ever made like a dough out of flour and water. Not quite that thick, but you get the general idea. So um, I'm realizing now that I'm using metal on my good saucepans, and that's a no-no in this house. So little tiny whisk it is. I'm also going to crank my heat up to like medium instead of low. I know I've said it before, but I really don't like this cooktop. <laughs> I know it's like fancy because it's a KitchenAid, but, and I was impressed. Like when we toured the house, I was like, oh right, KitchenAid, that's like top of the line. I can't stand this thing. It doesn't heat right. It's got cracks on it that I didn't notice. But, you know, we're stuck with it for now because gutting the kitchen, not an option. But if it were, oh my gosh, what I would have planned. Okay. Again, three to five minutes. I'm not going to make you sit through this. Mine is starting to do the thing. So just a little bit longer here. And see how it's gloopy there in the middle? I'm trying to make sure I get it all over. Perfect. That's the consistency right there. That's what you want. That is perfect. So we're gonna take this off the heat. You're going to use a spatula, scoop it out and put it in a small measuring cup or just a glass bowl. You're gonna let it sit on the counter until it's room temperature and then we'll come back and make the actual dough. But this, this is what you want right here. Okay, my Tanzong please let me have said that right, is room temperature. So we're ready to make our dough. To do this, you can do it by hand. You can do it with a hand mixer or a machine mixer. I'm obviously going with uh, Bessie here because, you know, I'm not mixing this by hand. All right, you're going to do two and a half cups of bread flour, or in my case, all-purpose flour. We're going to add two tablespoons of non-fat dry milk. I love this stuff because it is shelf stable. Um, just give it a little flopsy. It did say two tablespoons, right? Yes, two tablespoons. 
of dry milk. Excellent. What else? Remember, I'm not, listen, I'm not using fancy ingredients here because number one, we don't have any fancy stores nearby. Number two, I'm not gonna pay prices when cheap stuff will do just fine. All right, we need a teaspoon of salt. And look at me measuring the salt this time. Usually I don't. I just throw it in there because I feel like I know what a teaspoon of salt looks like but I'm being very careful with this recipe. A fourth a cup of sugar. So I guess it is kind of like a sweet bread. A tablespoon of instant yeast. And I was gonna use, just reuse this tablespoon, but it's got a lot of stuff on it. And I don't want to contaminate the yeast so we are going to find a different i have measuring spoons everywhere i swear i do where are they at now i don't know they should be in the store though what is this that's a tea stand which is what i was looking for just a little bit ago and couldn't find it hey a tablespoon Seriously, I have three different sets of measuring spoons. I have these. I have the wide flat ones, which I love because they come with this cute little leveler and there's like so many different measurements. And then I have these Pampered Chef ones, which are, you know, fine, whatever. It does say a tablespoon, right? Yes, tablespoon of instant yeast. Because my yeast is a little bit old. I. I I go over a little and that's okay. It's just a little. Okay, half a cup of milk. Again, they're asking that you use whole milk. Again, I wasn't gonna buy a half gallon of whole milk when we don't drink that. Uh, one large egg. If you are new here, I would like to remind you, please, 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 do not crack eggs into what you're making, okay? 44 years on this planet, and I cannot tell you the number of times that I have cracked open an egg and it has had yik inside of it. And that's from chickens, that's from the store. It could, honestly, the store-bought eggs, I think I've had the worst luck with. So if you do that and you've cracked an ick egg into what you're making, you've wasted money and you have to throw all of that out now. So get a bowl. Yes, you're doing dishes, but it's better than wasting an entire batch of some kind of dough or mix. Trust me on that. Okay, la, 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 la. one egg. Oh, melted butter, four tablespoons of melted butter going in. Just gonna get all that buttery goodness in there. Okay, let me leave this right here for the spoon. And then what else? Oh. Yes, now we're going to add our tenzong, tenzong. I, I practiced trying to say it for like 20 minutes and every time I still felt like I was getting it wrong. So, okay. Now we're gonna turn the mixer on. You're gonna start mixing this. You want the dough to become smooth. I have my dough hook in here. Um, I already put my flour in before I started the video. So you're gonna want your dough to be kind of smooth and elastic. This might take a little bit. Impatient me just wants to kick up the mixer and get it really going. While, if you're using a mixer, while this is mixing, you need to grease a bowl because that is how we are going to get our dough to rise or poof. It's not necessarily going to do like a traditional rise. Um, it's not gonna double in size or anything like that. It's gonna get poofy though. So, where is my spray? Cause you know, I only use spray for this. <laughs> Because what else am I going to use, honestly? 
pretty sure that's the only reason I keep, keep the Pam around. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere with that. I wouldn't call it smooth yet, but we're getting there. Boom. Except now it's also in my hand. <laughs> Yuck. All right, what do we have? Almost there. My dough looks like it's a little bit dry. I think I've got like a few little drops of milk in here. I'm just going to try to get that in there. Sometimes all a, few, a few drops of liquid is really all it's going to take. Yep, that did the trick. Okay. Yeah, it's smooth. It's elastic. Let me show you what we got here. All right. Ta-da. See, it's, it's kind of bouncy. So you're gonna shape it into a ball and you're gonna throw it in your greased pan. Boom. And then you're gonna take your tea towel. I hope you have tea towels. Uh, mine are in there. So I'm just gonna use this. We're just gonna throw a towel over this, okay? Now, to get that poof, to get that rise, it's gonna take anywhere between 60 to 90 minutes. If I were you, I would set a timer for 60 and check on it, okay? So you'll be able to notice, you'll be able to tell. If you don't think that you're gonna be able to tell if it rose, take a picture with your phone. Just take a snap a picture, try to use a clear glass bowl and snap a picture of it. And then that way you'll have something to compare it to in an hour because I've done that before. I've forgotten what I started at and I wasn't sure if it rose or if, you know, my yeast didn't work. Take a picture. It'll last longer than your memory if you're anything like me. Okay, get your dough in the bowl, get it covered, set your timer, and I'll see you back in an hour to an hour and a half. Future Katie here. While your dough is rising, you're gonna need to gather your pan, okay? You're gonna need an eight inch or nine inch round cake pan. Um, similar to what we used for coffee cakes, if you used a round pan, round, if you used a round pan for, where did my round pan go? Mm, I don't know, oh, there it is. Round pan, okay? G lightly greased round pan. That's what we're gonna need when we come back when our dough has risen. And now you've seen my whole kitchen and that's weird for me, but not for you. Or maybe it is weird for you. Sorry if I made it weird. Okay. Okay, <laughs> here we go. My dough has been sitting for an hour. It's puffy. It, it didn't rise, um, but it is definitely puffy. Um, so that's, that's something, I guess. It didn't say to work on a floured surface, so I'm not gonna worry about that so much. Let's see here. It also says to gently deflate it. Um, like, I don't think mine really got super puffy. So I'm just kind of, I guess if you gently deflate it, you're gonna need to talk nice to it and tell it that it's pretty and poke it. Um, usually with dough, I punch it, but that's not what we're doing here. We're, we're being gentle with it. So a few pokes, kind of press it down a little bit, tell it to wake up. Um, okay. We are going to divide it into equal pieces or so says the recipe. If you're new here, I don't have the best track record with making equal portions. Now, if you want large rolls, you're gonna go with eight. Slightly smaller rolls, you're gonna go with 10. I'm gonna use this, it's called a bench scraper, I think. And I'm going to go like a pie here. That's how I'm gonna divide mine into eight. And that's the reason I'm going with eight is because that's easier to divide. So. Close, close, so close.
All right, there's my eight. Now, before I roll this into a ball, I'm gonna grease my cake pan here over the sink because I got stuff on the floor. So I had to mop the floor while we were letting things rise. I don't have to do that again. Okay, now you're gonna take your dough, you're gonna squish it, you're gonna roll it into a ball, right? Yes, we're going to roll them into a ball. Please, please, please don't let me have another roll disappointment. Um, so I'm trying to be gentle and still get that roly poly shape. <laughs> I think I'm doing all right. It's okay if your dough touches. It's okay if your, <laughs> it's okay if your balls touch. Seriously. I'm like a 12 year old. <laughs> um, we're just gonna round shapes. That's the middle one. I'll put that one in the middle. Now, once you're done with this part, guess what we get to do? Nothing. You get to do nothing. You get to wait for another 40 minutes to let the dough rest, which could potentially have it be rising again. Oh, that's like a flat. We don't need flat, not flat. Um, so your dough might get puffy again. It might rise a little bit more. Um, I'm thinking mine is not. My house is really cold today. Remember y'all, there is magic in baking, especially when you're using yeast. And sometimes the environment plays a part in exactly what kind of rise you're gonna get, if any. <laughs> so we have weird weather today and the pressure's off and the humidity is crazy and I can't keep the house a consistent temperature and all of that plays a part. Okay. Ta-da. Oh, they kind of rolled around. I'm gonna put them back where they go. Here, they're kind of touching a little bit, that's okay. And we're gonna cover again and again, set a 40 minute timer. Now, you know how long it takes your oven to preheat. So halfway through that timer, I'm not getting a delivery, hush. Um, halfway through that timer, you're gonna wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So set your rest timer, and maybe set a timer to preheat your oven. That way we can just jump right back in. See ya in a little bit. It's been 40 minutes and my rolls have poofed a little. See, they're a little poofy. Now, egg wash, milk wash, egg wash, milk wash, egg wash, milk wash. Not a bowl, you have to choose one. You could do an egg wash, which is one egg and a little bit of water, like I think a tablespoon of water mixed up, or milk. So I don't wanna mess with an egg wash, I'm gonna go with milk. If you don't have one of these, you can use your fingers. I highly suggest getting one of these though. It's really good for a lot of things. Um, so you're just gonna take a little bit of your chosen wash and make sure you get the sides, the top, all the way around, however you can. Try to get it all covered. It's okay if you get sloppy with it, it's no big deal. This will give your rolls a nice shine we like shiny rolls. Um, I am, I know I mentioned being nervous because I have not really, in my mind, I have never successfully made rolls before, um, which is supposed to be one of the easiest things to do. But I, I'm worried about these because they don't, I don't feel like they poofed enough but I'm going with it. We're just, we're just leaning into it. And uh, if this works out, great. If not, then I am zero for 20 on rolls. And I'll know that maybe, maybe rolls just aren't my thing and that's okay. Or maybe I should try a different recipe. You know, it's fine. We try things here. That's kind of the point, trying new and different things. Um, see, this is the part where my, where my uh, 
desire to be incredibly thorough really gets out of control because, yeah. Yep, yep. That's okay. That's okay. It's fine. It's good. It's a good thing. Oh, see, I missed a spot. I'm glad I checked. Now I'm just getting crazy. Okay, so you got your wash done. All those nooks and crannies. And then we're gonna slip these into the oven, which should be preheated. And we are gonna put these in for 25 to 35 minutes. 25 to 35 minutes. You're gonna want them golden on the top, lightly golden. And you're gonna need your thermometer for this. I don't know why I always pull that drawer out. It's not in there, it's in here somewhere. Um, because thermometer, you're wanna go, gonna wanna go in the center roll, in the middle of the center roll, 190 degrees should be the finished temperature. So set your timer, I'll get the words eventually, set your timer for 25 minutes and I will see you back. Oh, I forgot, um, real quick, when you pull your rolls out, when they're done, you're gonna wanna put them in the pan someplace for 10 minutes, okay? Don't pull them out of the pan yet, you need 10 minutes. A lot of times with baked goods, when you pull it out of the oven, it's still baking and that time is built in. So you need to leave it in the pan for 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes, then you can take it out and put it on a cooling rack, okay? Great, see you in about 30 minutes. Okay, the rolls are out of the oven and <laughs> As predicted, they're a little more dense than the photo on King Arthur's website. And that's on me because I didn't have bread flour. Um, all purpose flour does tend to make things a little denser, but these aren't heavy, these aren't bricks. Usually when I try to make rolls, they turn out like bricks. So mine are still a little bit warm. I did um, use the thermometer to make sure I guess all that's left to do is give it a taste test here. Um, golden on the top and the bottom, not quite shiny. If I'd done an egg wash, they'd probably be shinier. Mm. Wow. Okay, that's a really good tasting roll. It's got a thicker texture, not quite biscuit, but a little bit more dense than a roll. But the flavor is so good. It still has a very light flavor, um, not quite sweet, but it's just really good. So I'm gonna give this recipe absolutely like nine out of 10 stars. And I'm gonna try it again when I have bread flour on hand, just to see if that does make a little bit of a difference but I'm gonna call it a win. Well, that wraps up week 20 of the baking challenge. I hope that you had the chance to bake along and I hope that your rolls were not hockey pucks. At least mine weren't this time. Um, if this is your first time here, thank you for joining me. If you would like to bake along, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. I'll post these videos every Saturday morning between 7 and 9 a.m. It just kind of depends on how together I have my life that week. Also, you should go over to the Facebook page or the Instagram account or both and make sure that you follow along there as well because every Wednesday morning, I'm going to post the name of what we're making along with the ingredient list. That way you have everything that you need. You can get your shopping done in time and you're well prepared for Saturday. So next week, we're gonna try a recipe that I'm a little shocked I have not attempted before. So I guess I'll see you then.